Good afternoon and welcome to the Asperger's Growth Channel, the home for all of you autis out there and for you neurotypicals, of course. We're, we're an all-inclusive channel here and I'm Thomas Henley. I'm here to talk to you today about autism and psychopathy. Two very different things sharing similar qualities in a different way. This video is something that I've been wanting to talk about for a while now. It's something that's quite interesting. The reason why I thought it, I found it quite interesting is because growing up as an autistic person, your brain is different, as, as many of you know, as many of you can imagine. And so the way that we relate to people is very different as well. In a lot of times in my life, I have questioned my own sanity. I've questioned whether I have the ability to understand and relate to another human being. With autism, there are a lot of those social components that are a little bit blurry, a little bit difficult to understand and work with. Furthermore, there are many, 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 many misconceptions about autism and empathy. Of course, there is a lot of literature on empathy in psychopathy and autism, but how and in what ways are they different from each other? I have done so many psychopath and sociopath tests that I cannot count on my my ten fingers because it's it's more than that, of course. My girlfriend has also given me an insider's perspective on some of the groups on Facebook and some of the social media sites. The one thing that, that seems to pop up is that People who are dating autistic people sort of quota, quota lack of empathy, a lack of understanding, a lack of feeling, anything, you know, any, any sort of emotion towards them or towards things that happen in their life or things that happen in their partner's life, you know? And so there's a lot of confusion around that. Autism and psychopathy also quite weirdly, <laughs> share very similar rates of coincidence. I think, you know, for autism, it's about 2%. Maybe psychopathy is like around that number. Something very similar to each other. So I guess, you know, there are a lot of ways that these two conditions are, are similar. Um, but as I will get into eventually with the video, there are many, many ways that they are different. And that is the important thing to highlight. Let's first address empathy. What is it? Empathy is a very blanket term. You know, most people think that em an empathy is this monolithic single thing that either people can have or they can't have. But in reality, from some of the psychological and scientific research, Empathy has generally been split into two categories, cognitive empathy and adaptive empathy. Both of these are very different. Cognitive empathy is the ability to imagine what someone else is thinking or feeling, whereas adaptive empathy is the ability to act appropriately to that emotion, to someone's experience, to someone's negative feelings, to someone's positive feelings. They're very different concepts. They're very different things. They, they're both types of empathy, but they differ in, in some very, very large ways. So let's talk about autism. I have had the pleasure to talk with one of the leading autism researchers in the UK, Mr. Well, I'm not going to say Mr. It's actually Sir. <laughs> Sir Baron Cohen. Yes, he is. The, you probably heard that name before. It's not Sasha Barra Cohen, but he is related to him. He's a cousin. And he is a big figure in autism research. Sure, he's had a lot of controversy around uh, what is considered to be neurogendering, but he's done a lot of useful and productive work around empathy. Uh, he's delivered a few talks on it, and he's recently been on my podcast and we've talked all about the different aspects of empathy. Sure, I knew a lot about it at the start, but it was just good to kind of confirm it was someone who has, has 
been a large player in that. Popularised by Lorna Wing, quoting a lack of empathy. <laughs> there is a large social stigma around autistic people not being empathetic. Um, and I think that is generally caused by that misconception around empathy. Autistic people generally are lower in cognitive empathy, meaning it's hard to understand situations, so understand people's emotions, imagine what they may be thinking or feeling, and so it can make the social landscape quite difficult. You know, a lot of social anxiety, a lot of misunderstandings, um, a lot of negative experiences. But the difference is, is that autistic people show adaptive empathy. They have a normal ability to show adaptive empathy in general, an innate ability, you know, something that you're born with. Many autistic people have cognitive empathy, um, but it's usually something that's built up as, as a skill and not just a God-given trait, usually. <laughs> usually. <laughs> the best example of this I can give is through my work as a teacher. I used to work one-to-one -one with autistic children and I've kind of realised from that work sort of the, the ways that I am different from, you know, autistic children. I mean, there's a lot of different things that I differ, but one of the ways is that they really don't understand when they've hurt them, hurt somebody, either emotionally, socially, or physically. Um, and they usually sort of continue to, to, to sort of ignore it and push it aside and not recognize it as something of significance. And generally that is a problem with cognitive empathy. But when you make them aware of it, either by exaggerating your facial expressions and playing into the, oh no, I'm kind of, I, you've hurt me stereotype. And once they're aware of it, then they, they're usually even more willing to, to, to try and help, to try and solve this, this situation, to try and um, mend it. So that's that's a good comparison point of the different types of empathy you know one is a difficulty understanding and one is a difficulty acting but once autistic people know what the situation is then they act accordingly and usually usually due to the amount of trauma and amount of bullying and low life quality things that we experience um we, we tend to show a lot of adaptive empathy So let's talk about the psychopaths, those nasty, horrible people, the ones that we don't like to talk about, but still exist in society. They sort of, for me, they sort of appear in um, a sort of movie characters in my head. You know, I can't imagine talking to a psychopath, you know, it just seems so far removed from my reality as a, as a person. But the main ways that autistic people differ from psychopathic people, people with psychopathy, is that people who are psychopaths have sort of an inverse profile to autistic people. They tend to be very high in cognitive empathy, so they can understand people, they know what they're thinking and feeling, usually to a very high degree but they lack the adaptive component. They are very self-driven, they do not care about other people, and they do not show appropriate responses to, to those emotions and to those states of mind that people are in, unless it's, it's some form of advantage or camouflage. It is the inverse of that. Autistic being low in cognitive, high in adaptive. Psychopaths, low in adaptive high in cognitive. And those are some of the really key differences because they do matter and they are very important to highlight. Psychopaths can use their cognitive empathy to manipulate people, to get themselves higher in certain workplaces, to commit crimes without being noticed or known about even. And that's because they have a keen sense for how people are thinking and feeling and they use that to their advantage they 
manipulate the situation. They employ all sorts of psychological tactics in order to get what they want from a person. They don't care about the feelings. They don't care about what happens to them. They don't care about if they're in pain. As long as they are enjoying it, or as long as they are gaining in some way from it, they will do it. And that's a massive difference. So let's go over some of the common things that people say about autistic people and how they compare to real psychopathy, real lack of care for people, real lack of empathy or adaptive empathy, if you if it be. One key and important difference is that autistic people generally have very high moral standards. They stick very neatly to that moral code that they have. And whether that's to do with laws or whether that's to do with their own feelings and, and thoughts on the world, they tend to stick to that moral code. So you may have cases where autistic people are more likely to be whistleblowers, more likely to call people out on behaviours that, that maybe are against the law, but maybe not, you know, it's pr pretty socially acceptable um, in a certain group. And, you know, for, for any group of people who stick to those moral codes and have them very glued into their life, it's hard to, to, to view them as people who are, who are likely to do some of the things that psychopaths do. On the other side of the, the coin, <laughs> on the other side of the coin, you have psychopaths. They don't care about laws. They don't care about moral codes. They will break them if there is no repercussions for them. They will do whatever they like. They're incredibly self-driven. They have a high amount of self-interest and complete lack of care for all of these social structures that we have in place, these laws that guide acceptable human behavior. Another key point that is perhaps alluded to a lot, either by parents or partners of autistic people, is that they generally show a lack of interest. They show a lack of um, emotion, I don't know what the word is, emotional reciprocity, something along those lines. They don't react in the way that most people would. And sometimes it, it comes off as a, a lack of care you know, for, for, for what someone's experiencing. But the, the problem is, is that this isn't a lack of care. This is a lack of expression. For me personally, when someone's telling me something that's negative that's happened to them, sometimes I may forget to express it on the outside. I may be listening intently and, you know, trying to feel what they may be feeling and try to empathize with them. But it doesn't necessarily reflect that on this group of muscles, <laughs> this group of facial muscle, muscles that I have on my face. And that's sometimes a problem because that, that kind of gets misconstrued as not caring. Whereas psychopaths, they can be very expressive and they will use that. And they may feign interest and, and understanding and empathy for their own advantage, but they don't feel it. They don't care. Autistic people may care, and in a lot of cases, if someone's going through trauma or a bereavement or, or something horrible, uh, like mental health, they're likely to be empathetic towards that person, at least on a cerebral level, inside. They may care a lot, they may do things to try and help them, to make them feel better, to do anything in their power to make them feel better about a certain situation. And that's something that, that maybe isn't expressed. And to many outlookers, many people who are in relationships with autistic people, whether it be friendships, family, uh, romantic relationships, they may misconstrue that lack of expression for lack of care. And that is sometimes a problem. Autistic people have been quite commonly labeled as blunt, as uncaring as you know whatever kind of bad social awkward you know all of those bad social words that, that we have for people autistic people gen generally tend to get the blunt of that <laughs> which is a bit ironic 
considering what we're talking about. And yeah, I mean, in general, from my own experience talking to a variety of autistic people, they tend to be a bit more blunt, more direct. But the problem is, is that when someone who's not accustomed to that talks to an autistic person and they're blunt and direct, that can get misconstrued as being rude, as not caring about what they have to say and, you know, just being a bit too direct and, and making you too uncomfortable. And that's a problem. You know, it's 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 a difference in, in how we communicate, how we're brought up, um, how our brain develops, the different ways that we socialise with, with fellow human beings. There are many ways that we differ, but it doesn't mean that that innate difficulty with socialising means that they are intentionally trying to cause you discomfort or intentionally trying to make you feel like they don't care. That's a key difference, a key point, rather, to stick on. <laughs> stick on. This is the problem, filming multiple videos at once. It's good for me, it's good to, you know, I can just get them done and edit them over a few weeks, but sometimes it's not so great. <laughs> Especially when you're staring at a ring for like hours, hours and hours. It's only been about an hour and a half. Not too bad. So, Mr. Bond, I, I I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope that it has cleared up a lot of the misconceptions that you may have. And I don't blame you. Understanding autism is hard. It's a complex thing. It's not easily taken to. It's a different brain. It's, it's a different set of personality traits. It's a, it's a whole host of different things. So, Mr. Bond, I hope that... <laughs> it's not Mr. Bond, that's Austin Powers. One million dollars. I hope that you will give me one million dollars for this video. I hope this has cleared up any questions that you had about this topic. I have not seen anything on this on YouTube even though it's something that stood out for me or has stand, stood out for me for a long time. So I hope that this information has cleared things up for you. And I hope that if you have a relationship in, in any way with an autistic person, that this can bring to light that, yes, they do feel empathy. They may find it hard to imagine what you're thinking or feeling, but it doesn't mean that they don't feel empathy. It's just a difference, and the more that we can talk about things like this, I hope, uh, the more that things like this won't so circulate and become an issue in different relationship groups on Facebook. I mean, of, of course autistic people feel empathy. We're not psychopaths. <laughs> God. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video, as I said. And if you want to follow my other work, my media work, the podcast, maybe, 40 Audi Podcast, available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, or you want to check out the social medias that I have, that's all at Asperger's Growth. Easy to find, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Go check them out if you want to, of course. And, um, yeah, let me know what you think. Did you Have you learned anything from this video? Uh, do you have anything to add on the, the differences between these very widely varying conditions. Do you have any personal opinions on this topic? Do you have any experiences? Has this cleared up things in your relationship with an autistic person? Let me know. I, al I always like to hear from people and I always like to, to hear that some good is coming out of me talking to a camera. Um, it's always lovely to hear as a creator. I hope you have enjoyed. And if you have, stick around. Check out some other videos and, God forbid, like the video. I mean, everyone knows about it, but nobody talks about it. You know, when you just get really concentrated on something, really into making these videos and bashing them out as like wildfire. But I, I've, need, I've needed we for like, I don't know, like an hour or something 
Still not going. <laughs> Can't break myself out of this little YouTubing mode that I'm in. It'll pass. And my bladder will burst until uh, fill and become a balloon and it will fly off into the solar system and to the stars and through the cosmos, waiting to relieve my... You know what, I'm gonna scratch this. Sweet up the moped, pull that, 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 pull that